at the MCG in Melbourne, bidding you welcome to the final quarter of the second semi-final between Hawthorne and St Kilda. As we go into the final stanza, we find Hawthorne leading 11-16 to St Kilda 7-7. So far, Peter Hudson has kicked seven goals in this match. St Kilda will be kicking down to the Richmond end in the final quarter. Elliot of St Kilda with the ball. Kicks it wide, right down. There you are, you can see this is the pattern of Hawthorne's play. Two of their players went for the ball and not a St Kilda man. Kelvin Moore, who's played magnificently at fullback today, takes his kick now, almost to the wing position on the member stand side. McIntosh goes up from behind. Here's Minot, just can't get his hands to the ball, but he's getting a free or no. It's going the other way to uh, Ma. Something must have happened behind that play as Ma kicks the ball now up towards the pocket. It's forced back to the half forward point. Ma comes in once again. Players overrunning the ball. Picked up by Judson. He gets it across here to Moran. Moran now down towards centre half forward. Breen has the sit, but he's too far underneath it. Breen is still going. Lawrence comes in, gets it across to Dittrich. The big fella bowls him over as he goes through. But uh, again, we find David Parker, the Hawthorne skipper, relieving the pressure. The mark taken by Alan Martello of Hawthorne right in the centre. For the top umpire, Jeff Crouch. Hawthorne doing exceptionally well at the present moment as Martello goes forward, but St Gilda coming through through Colling, and Colling's kick is not a good one, but it goes towards their half-forward flank on the member stand side. Les Hawkins comes out to meet it from Hawthorne. And, McIntosh uh, is down there. McIntosh in the goal mount. Yes, he's getting treatment from the throne, as you can see. Another player down there. There's two. Oh, there's Martello coming from behind, but couldn't take the mark. It's taken by little Judson there. Back pocket play for St Kilda, right in front of the member stand, on the member stand side of the ground. Here's Judson's kick, right around the wing. Dittrich sets himself from behind and takes a chest mark, plays on immediately. Tackled by Hawk, and it's not a good kick by Carl Dittrich, and it looks like it could go out of bounds. Yes, it's going out of bounds before Lawrence can get to it. Ron Barassi, is this uh, St Kilda's hope to keep that ball moving at all costs? Their only chance, Michael, is to keep up the desperation and the relentless attitude that they showed in the third quarter. But I, you know, I doubt if they can, because their opponents are experts, the best in the league at this style of game. Here's Bob Skilton. Matthews and Hawthorne now swings the ball round towards Minot, who's the ball there. He should have taken the mark, but the, they're going to give the free kick against Kitty. Minot all on his own on that occasion until the, right at the last moment. Minot of St Kilda coming back after a broken hand. Leg injury to uh, McIntosh by the look of it. Back to Bob. McIntosh drives a long kick down towards Lawrence and Co. Up they fly. Nobody can mark it. It's Ross Smith who comes clear. He left puts it over the top, but it's, no, it's off line and it's one point only. One that's in Kilda badly needed then. McIntosh still down, still uh, getting the treatment. Hawthorne 11 16, leading St Kilda 7 goals 8. It's more of Hawthorne who kicks uh, out towards the outer wing. It's Bustle in leading in the front position. He drops the mark, but he's given holding the man and will take the free kick in the half track paint. Bustle now kicks the ball further around the wing. It's right on the wing position now. Down it comes. It's Day of Hawthorne who has, who has it. He swings in towards centre half forward. It's Colling and Kenny. Neither player can take the mark. Porter whips in. He gets uh, offloaded. Judson, who gets a hand pass out to Minot, who's kick smothered, comes over to Crimmins, where it's down, and it's Hudson and, and Murray. Murray punches the ball away. Murray, who's got it now, but Hudson's there. Plays it from Kilda comes in. His kick is smothered by Des Ma. The kick goes to the pocket. Ma comes in. His kick is also smothered. It goes to Day of Hawthorne, who sneaks in and kicks the ball back to Colling. McIntosh is coming off. As, as McIntosh comes off, it's all right on the wing position. It's a free kick to Hawthorne. You see Don McIntosh there. Started to come into the game in the last quarter, but he's got a, what looks to be a bad uh, leg injury this time, and McIntosh will now be replaced by Theodore of St Kilda. Short pass down to Rice. Rice hooks the ball on. Down it goes towards Murray and, uh, and Hudson. Looks like a good mark for Murray, but Martello comes in, hits the it goes along the ground all the way, but it's through with the goal from Martello. Martello has kicked now three goals. He's been a fine player at centre half forward for Hawthorne. You see there, McIntosh being led around the valley by a couple of trainers. Helped him, you know, you can see that he could not have continued. That takes Hawthorne to 12 goals, 16, leading St Kilda, 7 goals, 8. And we are four and a half minutes into the final quarter, Bob. It's uh, Hawthorne going forward once again. The ball taken by Kenny. Kenny hooks it around. Here's a two-out duel. Oh, Murray and Hudson. Murray close to the boundary line. Yes, he keeps the ball in play with a well-placed kick. A chance for Pesanko to pick up. Pesanko breaks clear. No, he doesn't. Of Day. 
In comes Rice now of Hawthorne. Rice looking downfield. Drives in. The ball not marked here. Hudson comes out to meet it. A scramble going on. Judson gets it across to Colin. His kick is smothered. Picked up by Dolph. Dolph now tries to get it back in towards the centre of the MCG. Mile across here towards Porter. Porter messes it up. Taken there by uh, Theodore. Theodore now. It's a bad kick from him though. Over the centre. Into the forward line for St Kilda. Green comes out here. Get a free. Green takes the free. Plays on immediately. Kicks it wide to Bonnie. Who's on the half point back on the outer side. Bonnie now steady, he's down towards the goal square. Here's a go, the ball bounces awkwardly. They race for it here. The boy pushing it in front of him is Scott there. Over the line it goes, and there'll be a throw in. A throw in in the forward pocket for St Kilda on the member stand side. The Saints kicking down to the Richmond end in the final quarter. Ditrich comes in to contest there with uh, Hawken. Down to the ground it comes. Hello, two Hawthorne players collide, allowing Ditrich to come in. Ditrich hooks it around. He's put it through, I think. Yes. Five and a half minutes into the final quarter. Jack Edwards, any hopes and kill that? Well, if Jack oh, Edwards... Sorry, I'm Jeff Crouch. I'm sure if Jack Edwards was here, he'd say the same as I, I would say. And they've got to hope because they're struggling desperately to get that ball forward. Hawthorne, if they relax at all, will let, let some children in. They're not too far behind those yet. Ron Barassi, do you give them much hope? Uh, no, I don't, Michael. The two, two goals in the next few minutes, you know, it could make a big difference. It could make a difference to their morale. And that's what's needed in a game like this. You need to you know, feel that you're getting back in the game because the game, against a team like Hawthorne, who are so relentless, unless you keep with them, and always feel you have a chance of getting through to them when you just, I won't say you give it in, but you just feel it's impossible to, to beat them. It's St Kilda now, it's on their half forward flank. Elliot takes the mark on the member stand side. Comment then from Ron Barassi. Down forward, the Saints go, oh, Lawrence came out, takes the mark. And the Hawthorne players looked astonished. He came from nowhere, he tries a short run here, it won't come off. Moore comes out for Hawthorne. What a great player he's been. Ball now to the wing position on the member stand side. And Moran takes the mark. Jeff Crouch. Well, it's been a game of fluctuating fortunes in this quarter so far. And Hawthorne loved to play with just half a ground. Give Hudson the rest of the ground. And there's a kick from Moran to come up for driving St Kilda four. They rise. No mark. Moore once more comes through with the ball. Oh. And takes it out of bounds on the foot. But it was touched. It was touched as he kicked the ball. And therefore, it'll be a throw in. It's a throw in on the wing position going towards the half forward flank for St Kilda. St Kilda kicking towards the Richmond end of the ground. And St Kilda with their 19th and 20th men on. Well, they're desperate at the moment. They've got no one else to put in there. As Big Carl Ditrich throws himself trying to do something for St Kilda. But Elliot comes out with the ball towards Breen. Breen by himself takes it. Turns on his left foot looking for oh, Held oh, Gold. Oh, it held too, but it no he missed that run. Davy Parkin came out with the ball. A great back pocket play today, Davy Parkin. Up they go. Crimmins couldn't mark it. Chinners is in there. So too is Scott. Over they go. And through there is Hawken. Punched it over his head. It was still a punch. That's all right. Bustle comes through. It's the cross. Carl Dittrich. He can't hold it. He handballs it over to Minot. Minot looking for goal. It's a high kick. Right up into the teeth of goals. It's a two-out duel. Scott up there with goal. Now a lot of players come in. Off the ground. Off the ground. Who was it? Lawrence. Lawrence off the ground. Has Weegian a good goal? Well, certainly added life to the game here now, Michael. The eight. scores 12-16 uh, to 8-8, is it? 9-8. Three, three goals, eight the difference. Another goal here now on the, this crowd, which has been relatively quiet throughout the day so far because the scores have been often a long way apart, could really come to life. Let's hope so. It's starting to come to light as Scott goes up in the ruck for Hawthorne. They are Hawthorne going forward through quarter and the ball's coming towards Hawthorne forward line. Murray well out from Hudson. Back his judgment well on that occasion and puts the ball away. Coming towards the wing on the member stand side. Stevenson from behind. Couldn't mark the ball. Now he butters up. He nearly gets bowled over by Judson. A good hand pass. Over towards Lee Matthews. Lee Matthews. Hudson drops back. It's high towards Hudson and Murray. Punched away by Murray from Hudson to Caddy. Caddy looks for goal. It's offline though. Offline. One behind only to Bob Caddy. Hawthorne, a quick return with that point from the attack from St Kilda early in this last quarter. Nine and a half minutes of the final quarter gone. 12-17 to 9-8. Can the Saints get up? <coughs> Waiting for Bob Murray to kick out. An experienced fullback and a great fullback, Murray. Let's see where he's going to place this ball. He's looking for Ditvich on the member stand side. There's the kick. 
not wide enough for Dittrich, but the big fellow moves in. The ball hits the ground. A chance for Judson. He's close to the boundary line and takes it over. There'll be a throw in midway between the forward pocket and half forward flank for Hawthorne on the member stand side. The Hawks kicking up to the scoreboard end and this is the final quarter. Up they go. No tap down. In comes Ross Smith. Smith now into the centre. Green has the goal here. Up he goes but couldn't hold the mark and beat everybody. Down to the ground it comes. Through comes Bremner. Bremner gets his kick in but it goes right across the ground. In fact keeps it in St Kilda's territory. Parkin comes through there. Stalls for the free kick and gets it. I don't know about that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. He got the free kick. He was interfered with and that's all there was to it. He didn't have the ball. Uh, look, Bill Dellis, sure he didn't have it too. Well, that one would have been, if it was, what it was a doubt for one, Bill Dell has done a remarkable job today for a first first game umpire. Not saying that. Too. Not saying that yet, but if, uh, if mistakes are made, don't be blind to umpires. There's a uh, punch out now off the ground by uh, Crimmins. Could have been uh, termed a deliberate one, but it wasn't. And we'll take a throw in. On the half forward, flank for Hawthorne on the other side. Up they go. Over to have a break clear. It's the little Tiger Crimmins, and unfortunately, he puts it over the line on the full. Gee, Bobby, when you go in and get the ball like that, you deserve a better fight. There's no worries about that, Mike. He was off balance. Neil Basanko now with the ball. Basanko kicks it further around the wing. It's punched out by Elliott. It goes towards Trot and Rice of Hawthorne. Rice leading in the race for the ball at the moment. He gains position, kicks it down towards the forward line. It comes down there to Basanko once again. He drives the ball again back to the centre of the ground, but it's all Hawthorne. It's punched down, though, by Theodore. Comes down to the ground again. Brim the lead. Brim the kicks it down towards the half forward flank. But Robert Day comes out and takes a chest mark. He's dead his play for a moment. Comes on in towards centre half forward. It's off the side of the boot a bit. It's Teddy. Moran of St Kilda coming in in defence now. Takes it and drives it back from where it just came. Up they fly in a quarter of Hawthorne. Now in the centre who takes the mark. Ooh. He plays on and hand passes to Parkin. On to Crimmins. Crimmins it's Crimmins now. Drives it out where mine I saw on his own. He has one bounce. Has a look and has another bounce. And he stops and steadies him. A poor kick goes towards Gittery. The big fella's come right into the game since half time today. Yeah, this has been a real fire. He plays on. Goes past that mile on his mark. Has one bounce. Had a long kick down towards the goal. And it's just oh, one or two almost. Three. It has been played on day. Umpire Della has pulled play up. Fair enough. He came in under the flight of the ball. Now, it was Lawrence's mark, the Hawthorne player came in on the flight of the ball and connected with it. While we're uh, just waiting for the ball to be returned, Don Barassi had never been known as an umpire's friend, but what about Della's performance today? I think it's been great. I wouldn't make any excuses for him having his first game because once you're out there, you're just like a player. It's a final and you've got to play your part. I think he's done a tremendous job. Barry Lawrence now coming up. He's 30 yards out. He's on an angle, kicking to the Richmond end goal. A vital kick for the Saints. One point. Well, Lawrence has had the opportunities, Ron Barassi. He's had plenty of them, but hasn't steered the ball straight. He hasn't, like, with, with his team in this position, every kick that he, they have for goal is vital, and he's missed about three or four. He'd be really kicking himself just about to death. Out comes Calvin Moore now. Moore now comes along the member stand flank. Up they go. Oh, I think Green must have fallen for the trap. Leave it. And Heath of Hawthorne takes it. Heath now to the wing position on the member stand side. There they go, and the mark is taken by Judson. Judson of St Kilda, played quite solidly in the back pocket, takes his kick, in towards centre half forward, Green is there, Green takes it, Bob couldn't hold it, a hand pass across towards Elliott, bit of luck going St Kilda's way at the moment, a long hand pass here, will this come off, yes it's taken by uh, Ray, he's in a bit of trouble though, he can't quite get it clear, a hand pass to Elliott, in the back, oh, right in the back. back, yes, Jack Hill the blind miner can see that, right in the back. Now, Elliot would be some 40 yards out from the big sticks, 35 to 40, kicking from the member stand flank to the Richmond end. Where's Jack Hill work? What? In the mines. <laughs> he wouldn't get the card up in Franken Hill. Up he comes, Elliot kicks. Oh, this is offline to the mark. Lawrence appealing, Gold appealing. Who's he going to pay it to? Must be Gold, I say. <laughs> Looks like Gold. <laughs> and the Hawthorne players giving plenty of assistance to umpire Bill Della. Young Dolph has kicked one. He runs around, a left footer. One behind. Oh, St Kilda with the opportunities, but just not steering them through. 
bad luck for the kid. They call him Spooky Gold, as we said during the year. Look at him, he looks like a big ghost. Jeff Crouch, the player's friend. Hawthorne 12, Summerbeam, St Kilda 9, 10. Righto, Crouch, and take over. All right, Kelvin Moore kicking out towards the outer side. Up they go. There's no mark there. Glenn Elliott tries to get the ball away, but no, Leon Rice comes through for Hawthorne. His kick driving towards the half forward plate. There's a battle over there. And who comes up with the ball? Travis Page. He gets the kick down towards the centre. A diving mark over there by Glenn Elliott. He's come into the game in these last two quarters. He's been a good player for St Kilda in the last two quarters. Looking for a teammate in Lawrence. Lawrence is giving the lead. It's straight towards him. Up they go. Moore from behind. Taps it away. Barry Breen goes over the ball. He's tackled by... Oh, that's over the trot. Trot bounce it once. He's held. Not in possession. He got rid of the ball before he got held. And the hold was carried on with. The player that held him carried on with it. That was against that player. 16 minutes of the final quarter gone. St Kilda playing a lot better. But just not putting them through the big sticks. see what Trot does with it. 45 yards out, up against the boundary line. He puts it on its way. Has this gone through? If it has, it's a magnificent kick. No, another behind. Oh, golly, Ron Barassi, they're uh, throwing away their chances, but they're not real easy shots they're getting either. Well, those aren't, particularly from the boundary line, Mike, but, you know, let's go back to Hawthorne. They had a lot of shots too, so I right. uh, don't say that, uh, you know, until they've been unlucky in comparison with their opponents. Bob Skilton. Barry Breen at St Kilda now, right at centre half forward, directly in front, mark that kick off. Breen has kicked three to date. Having some of Breen's kicks today would have easily covered the distance that he's now kicking for. He's a long way out, but he can still get the distance. Breen comes in, he has got the distance. It's up to the accuracy now. It's, a, it's two, it's one goal now. Breen has kicked four goals now for St Kilda. Green, ten and a half four to St Kilda, back St Kilda to ten goals eleven, trailing Hawthorne, twelve goals seventeen. Seventeen and a half minutes of the final quarter gone, and in the final quarter so far, St Kilda have kicked three four to Hawthorne's one one. The crowd has come alive. And Green handles across there to Theodore. Theodore handles over to Bonnie. Bonnie steadies in an open front of an open goal. It's kick Bonnie. Two goals in two minutes. The crowd have really come to life. Not only the crowd, but the St Kilda side. You can see the scoreboard there. St Kilda 11 11. Hawthorne 12 17. And look for that crowd. The Saints are on the march, Ron Brassie. Yes, they're proving me wrong. Jeff, I thought they would have slowed the warp in this last quarter after the magnificent third. The last couple of minutes have certainly proved me wrong. That's tremendous because this is what the crowd want to see. How is that last bunch of dippers? Fantastic. Just on 18 minutes of the final quarter goal, it looks as if Ray Wilson of Hawthorne's coming on. They have both teams, coming on. Both teams with their 19th and 20th men on. They coming off, Wilson going on. Hawthorne must be worried. As St Kilda forced the ball forward. Harkin comes through, he's got to get a free kick. Yes. What a magnificent game he's played, David Parkin. Parker now drives to centre half forward for Hawthorne. A big pack of players there. Martello couldn't hold it. Out comes Moran with the ball. It gets tripped. But the umpire will bounce the ball. Is that a trip, uh, that was Jeff? A, no, that, that was a trip. That was a slide back, Mike. He's actually slipped over himself when and he was Jeff, back. watch it on the replay. I was, all right, I was watching the replay. Big right? tangle. All right, for St Kilda going forward anyway. It wasn't played by Della as Elliott gets the ball. And a, a good hand pass, or is it to Theodore? Stephen Ray it is. Stephen Ray, Ray goes over. The ball's still in play. Ray's kick coming around the half-forward flank on the member's stand side. He couldn't take it. Now Galt gets it. Galt goes goalward. Up goes Moore. No mark. It's on the ground. Lawrence is in there. He's held. No, he's, is it a free? Jeff, just let me clarify one thing. When I said about a trip, uh, there was nothing uh, deliberate about it. Their feet became entangled. It well, could have been no, Mike, on that occasion. occasion. No, it wouldn't have been entangled. That's all I wanted to know. OK, Galt uh, knocks the ball away, taken by Bremner. Bremner now in towards the centre. Minot is waiting there. Hawthorne, plenty of Hawthorne players. A hand pass here. Out comes Smith. Smith, the uh, St Kilda skipper, hooks it over his shoulder. Here's a goal. Oh! Mark by Stuart Trot. Trot is marked. He's a good 60 yards out. A good 60 yards out. 12 points of difference in favour of Hawthorne. Trotty's going to have a go at the big sticks too. He puts it on its way. It's going to drop short in the goal square, force through for one behind. 11 points of difference. 11 points of difference and we have been playing 
19 and a half, almost 20 minutes into the final quarter. Well, uh, Lombarassi, a great comeback by St Kilda. A magnificent comeback, Mike. One that you wouldn't dread off at half time because they look so down in almost every phase of the game. And you're watching it through Channel 7. Today we find uh, Hawthorne through Grimner getting it across to Parkin. Parkin now to the wing position on the outer side. Up goes Dickrich. He was held, but it's called play on. He didn't hold the mark in any case. A battle. And the free kick is going to Basenko. Basenko on that wing position on the outer side. Up comes Basenko. St Kilda coming back from the brink of despair. Players fly, the ball knocked away. Taken by Lawrence. He's tackled, but he kicks. He's got it through. It's five points of difference. What a comeback. 20 and a half minutes gone. 20 and a half minutes gone. Bobby Skilton. Lawrence has kicked two now, Mike, and having this St Kilda side front to life. Just listen to that crowd at the moment. Almost 21 minutes of play, and there's only five points of difference. A remarkable comeback by St Kilda. Dalla now bounces the ball. Up they go. It's Minot and Scott. Minot gets it down to Rice. Rice breaks clear of the pack. Gets the left foot that's smothered by Dinnery. It goes to Heath. He can't get a kick clear. It comes out to Brimner, who kicks it down. Let's go one wide of the pack. It's Colling who leads for the ball. Colling can't handle it cleanly, though. He knocks it on. It goes down to where Judson's there. Judson picks it up with a little left foot kick further around runs over the line and out of bounds, well on the wing position. Beautifully placed. A very good, well placed kick, Mike. It was the best thing that he could do. Right in front of the member stand. The crowd are really on their feet and so are every player. You see Scott and mine up there. Neither player can get it clear. It comes down to Wilson who's come on there. Wilson handballs the ball over and Bonnie and uh, Crimmins cannot quite take the ball and it goes over the line and out of bounds once again. Well, Barassi, any moves that either coach could make to seal it. Uh, no, I don't say it's so at this stage, Michael. Just every man for himself. Every man trying to give his utmost at this stage. Oh, kick off the ground by Minot. Sends it to the wing position on the member stand side. Green is there, but he's uh, tackled by Heath. There'll be a ball up. A ball up on the wing position on the member stand side. Umpire Bill Gower, his first finals match, and full congratulations to him. A magnificent effort. Yes, Ron. I would put Marcello in the ruck, I think. Well, let's see if John Kennedy, a very astute coach, does that. Bounce of the ball. There it goes. Minot gets into position. Scott's there also battling. Bonnie comes through, almost lost his head. A scramble. Smith comes out with the ball. There'll be another ball up. Another ball up. 22 and a half minutes gone. Five points of difference in the final quarter. Bill Della bounces. Here's Jeff Crouch. And Bill Della could have been umpiring his way into the grand finals. These two sides slug it out. Desmar gets up for the ball. It's a free kick on this occasion to Desmar. Right on the wing position on the member stand side. Desmar, left foot kick. Here he comes. Right up into the centre half forward position it goes. Martello's there. Austin killed the mark. No, it's play on to call. Down to the ground with Masenko coming through. His high kick going towards the centre of the ground. Bremen is in there. They muck each other up. Oh, oh, he's hit him hard too as Hawkins comes through. And it comes to St Kilda once more going forward. That's over on the other side. Up goes Ayuk. Is it a mark? Yes, it's it made. He's hurt himself. Martello is down. He's hurt. He looks very seedy. Gee, there's been some hard knocks taken today. But it's been a fair game. To go on with that. It's a killer through. Lawrence come forward. Lawrence with a hand pass to Breen. Breen's caught. Hand passes back towards Lawrence. David Parkins in there to help. Lawrence gets rid of it. Parkin batters up. Turns around. What a great skipper this. Parkin is, his kick right around the wing on the outer side. Dickrich is there. He gets the ball now with a right foot kick towards centre half forward. Ball oh, in the back. In the back. No ball. doubt about that one. The He's kicked four goals, Barry Breen. He's a long way out. He'll have to kick this 70 yards to put it through. A good 70 yards. Just a man to do it, Mike. Green comes up, he puts his foot into it, but uh, trying for distance. He lost accuracy and he puts it over the line in the forward pocket on the full. Still five points of difference in favour of Hawthorne and we are 24 and a half minutes almost into the final quarter. More of Hawthorne to take the kick. He kicks to the halfback flank on the outer side. There they go. Dittrich knocks it away from Scott. Comes down to Ma. Ma is bustled into a hurried kick. And it's over the line on the full, or is he being paid the mark? Yeah, it's over on the full, right? That'll be over on the full. Couldn't mark his own kick anyway. That's yeah, right. 
Well, that's the excitement. It's so intense. Moran takes the kick. It's into the forwards and Oh, Scott has it knocked away by Lawrence. It's close to the boundary line, taken by Crimmins. Crimmins now drives to the halfback flank on the outer side. It's over on the full. St Kilda still with a chance of pulling it out. But I reckon Hawthorne, after their magnificent first half, on the other hand, would be a bit stiff to lose, Ron. Well, it's even Stephen. They've both got two good halves under their belt, so whoever wins would deserve it. Right, there they go. Golf comes out, appeals for the mark. Not paid. The ball knocked down. Here's taken by Travis Page. He races around. Gets a hurry kick over towards Trot. Trot kicks. It's a high one. It's going through for one behind. Four points the difference. I think there's one section of the crowd that's back and even way some cure at the moment, Mike, and that's Richmond. <laughs> they don't care how close this is. It's going to be hard a desperate game. And the team that finishes the loser today will be a very tired team. We're in the time on, almost 26 minutes of the final quarter gone. Mike, Peter Hudson's up in the centre of the ground. There's not one player behind Peter Hudson and Murray there in the centre of the ground. Hawthorne really packing that uh, forward line of St. Kilda's trot marks. Trot is marked. Well, is he within kicking distance? Guys a good 55 yards out. Up he comes, those streamers uh, getting tangled around his ankles, and he puts it over the line on the full. I don't know why those streamers can't be moved off. Surely a couple of blokes with a rake would get them off in two seconds. Marcus Noswell has quite a few kicks from the last tennis dozen or so. have gone out of bounds, things like that. It's a sign of you know, tired players. Well, I reckon they're entitled to be weary Of course too. they are, yeah. Hawken with the ball in the back pocket. Gold on the mark. Hawken kicks. One mistake here and they're in trouble. Taken by Crimmins, a great battler. Crimmins now in towards the centre. They fly high to St Kilda Mark. Jeff Moran, a very courageous mark too. Hawthorne in trouble now. St Kilda attacking incessantly. 27 minutes of the final quarter gone as Lawrence leads. But Moran takes a long one to the edge of the goal square. They fly high. No mark to the ground it comes. It's picked up here by uh, Ray. He's still battling. He's pushing the ball in front of him. A left foot snap. It's back to the goal square. They set themselves. No mark. Lawrence. Hit the post. <laughs> Hit the post with that kick. Oh, what a oh, struggle this is. Bob Skilton, you seen anything like this? Oh, it's been a wonderful fight back by St Kilda, Mike. At three-quarter time, I honestly felt that if uh, St Kilda could just hold their own in the last quarter, they'd have done well. Three it's points of difference, Bob. 27 and a half minutes gone of the final quarter. And Moore kicked the ball out towards the half-back flank. It's quarter of Hawthorne who takes a timely mark. It's one that they need at this very moment. The players breaking down the ground at, at all rates because it's players all up in the half. It's down to come towards the wing. There's many Hawthorne players there, and it's Hudson. Peter Hudson who has taken a mark right on the wing position. Hudson now drives the ball oh, with a long kick, kick down towards Collins and Teddy. It comes over the back, and Lee Matthews is in the van. It comes Teddy who comes in. Teddy left foot, and it goes towards goal, but it's a little offline, and it's one point. One point to Hawthorne makes the difference now. Four points. 28 minutes gone of the final quarter. 28 minutes gone. Peter Hudson took that mark right on the centre wing position. Well, Ron Barassi at half time, you thought it was all over, didn't you? But St Kilda have come back. They've come back, they certainly proved me wrong. That's great, because this is the sort of final finish that you'd like to see in September. And you're watching it through Channel 7. Bonnie of St Kilda with the ball. Bonnie now down towards centre half forward. The ball bounces awkwardly there, but it's Heath coming out. Heath tries a long hand pass, but Trot comes through for St Kilda. Trot kicks down forward. The players miss it, they overrun the ball in their enthusiasm. Taken by Breen. Breen now tries a short one, it doesn't quite come off. Here's a go though. Bonnie's in there. It's uh, Stephen Ray getting the ball to Golf. Golf kicks. He's missed it. He's missed it. One point. Oh, what a half stopper. 29 minutes gone. 29 minutes gone and three points the difference. Waiting for Moore to kick out now. Kelvin Moore of Hawthorne. Where's he going to go? Hudson at centre half back. <laughs> He's going to the outer side. Up they fly. No mark. Comes to the ground. The battle going on. Porter on top of the ball. And umpire Bill Dallas says, I'll bounce it. A thriller. 
What a beauty for the second semi-final. Bounce of the ball. Can St Kilda get one through? The ball comes down here. It's picked up by Vasenko. A hand pass by Vasenko finds Crimmins. Little Peter takes a run. He kicks to the wing position on that outer side. Through comes Cowboy Neal. Cowboy a drop kick down forward. Big foul as the ball comes to way. Heath comes through for Hawthorne. A scramble. Heath gets one round the neck. Full play on. A hand pass to Plays. Plays kicks. Oh, and that'll no. be hard. Oh, oh, <laughs> Two points of difference at the 30 minute mark. Oh, this is a real hard stopper. The car says it's still a have a four back line. I'm oh, just looking at Alan Jeans there. Alan Jeans. His chin in his hands as Moore kicks out, comes along the member stand flank. Up they go, Rice of Hawthorne comes out with it. Rice to the wing position on the member stand side. Here's a go, it's Kitty. Kitty and Colling, neither able to pick it up. Colling has the set, pushes the ball around. Kitty comes in, Judson's there. Judson can't pick it up, oh, he's met by Rice. It's on the wing position on the member stand side. Look at this, what a gutsy performance. And a free kick. Free kick going to Shimmers of Hawthorne. I think the siren's gone. I can't hear it. I think the siren's gone. Hawthorne into the grand final. The siren's gone on the final scoreboard. Here reads. Let's have a look at that scoreboard. Reading. Hawthorne 12, 18, 90. St Kilda 12, 16, 88.